Are you scared of poltergeists and do you believe in haunted houses? Well, I have prepared for you a story that comes from Sweden. Well, actually, it's a place that borders with Norway. And this story will involve a lot of things flying around in a house and people simply being scared because they couldn't explain what was happening. And it's not a legend. These people really existed. So I think... Just continue watching, because this is going to be scary and interesting. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another episode on my channel. That being said, I hope you really enjoyed Lighthouse Halloween edition that was dedicated to Norway's witches, more specifically Bergen's witches. If you by some kind of chance didn't see those videos, I'm gonna link them down in the description box. Make sure you watch them because that's like history. People need to know about that, right? Today's story, oh my god. This is gonna be paranormal. I thought like it's been a while since I looked into some kind of paranormal activity topics and today is gonna be haunted house probably poltergeist and a really really weird family tree story so hold on we're starting the story is going to bring us to a place called Ryoden. i think i mispronounce it sorry for that so in a deep deep spruce forest in an area called warmland there was a house no, not in New Orleans, as you already understood. So there was a residence and a family moves there to live. It happened at around like the end of the 1800s and the story reaches its peak at the beginning of 1900s because that was the time when the family was simply forced to move out because they couldn't, couldn't even like live there. And they felt like this something was attacking the family members. So what really happened there? Before I really start to describe the crazy things that happened inside the house, I think we have to look into the family itself. Who are these people? Are they good people? Did they go to church? Maybe they were practicing some kind of black magic, you know? Because in a lot of times when something paranormal and crazy or like ghost related happens, a lot of times the main source and the reason why all of this crazy stuff is happening is the people themselves, if you know what I mean. So let's dive into the family tree of a family. And I'm going to start from the top. I'm warning you, you will have to listen carefully. It will get a little bit tricky, but I think you really need to understand the dynamics of the family in order to follow the story itself. The family's name was Harlinens, and I was lucky to find a blog where a lady went down to look into old church records just to make sure that this legend about a haunted house is real, like documented that this family existed. And there it was. Hollinens really existed. So now we're going to discuss a bit of the church records and the facts that we know about the family. Let's start from the top. So there was a guy, his name was Olaf Hollinen, and he married a lady called Valborg, and they had a couple of kids within their marriage. But before they got married, Olaf actually had an affair with a maid, and this maid gave birth to a son, which was basically Olaf's son, but they didn't get married. All right. So this son's name was Anders and he was described as a very nice person and he kept in touch with Olaf because it's his father and also with all of the kids that uh, came out of the marriage uh, with Valborg. So he's like half brothers and half sisters. So in marriage with Valborg, there were three kids. The first one was also called Olaf, and in church records he was described as deaf and dumb. They had a daughter named Brita. She was described as someone who hears little and can not speak. Also, there was uh, a son named Thomas. I didn't find any like specifics about him and whether he also had a disability, but all in all that you have to know that there are like three kids from Olaf's marriage. It seems like uh, these disabilities related to speaking and hearing was running throughout the family tree. You see, 
Olaf himself, the one who had these three kids, he had two brothers. One was Paul, and he was also described in church records as deaf and dumb. And also he had a brother, Henrik, who was also described in church records as deaf and dumb. And that's not it. In their household, besides Olaf, his three kids, there also lived grandpa, so father of Olaf. So it was a big family and they really had to take care of each other. So it is well known that among uh, all of these family members, Henrik was actually the one who took care the most of the rest of the family. Like he was the one who did all the chores and helped whenever somebody was in need. And that was despite the fact that Henrik himself also was deaf and dumb as described in the church records. So the thing is that Henrik had an affair with a maid and uh, they also had a son outside the marriage but he took care about this son and the son was like in very good relationships with Henrik. A little bit later Henrik though finds his real wife, his real love and the name of this woman was Marit. The church records say that in the year 1866 Henrik marries Marit. And an interesting fact is that Merit was 18 years older than Henrik. Apparently, she was not like a new person into this family. It was said that Merit had worked as a maid in the family a couple of years before, like, they decided to get married together, all right? So... I guess they met each other while she was still a maid in the house and then he kind of fell in love with her and then they decided to get married. The thing about her is that she had some major problems with her eyesight and gradually she was also becoming blind. But Henrik, it didn't stop him. As I said, he took care of the whole family, also including his new wife who was slowly also losing her eyesight. Another fact about this marriage is that when she was 37, she gave birth to a stillborn baby and she really grieved it. And this baby was actually born outside the marriage, so, so she didn't get married. The, her first marriage was with Henrik. And it is known that in this marriage with Henrik, she didn't have any other children. I think during that time, it would not be possible because... When she married Henrik, she would have been probably in her 50s. And I think it's also important to mention because, you know, if we talk about grief and like past ghosts, this could also probably contribute a bit to this whole story of this poltergeist and haunted house. After Henrik got married with Marit, he really wanted to have like his own place, his own house to start his new family. But unfortunately, he, wa he didn't have enough money and he couldn't afford to build himself a house. This is when his half-brother Anders steps in and he says that he's gonna build a house for Henrik and his new wife so that they can both live together. Anders built a separate house for Henrik and his wife and this house was later referred to as Valguna Hall, which meant like fire pit and that was the house that is like the main like center of these like haunted things happening, the poltergeist activity allegedly. So a house is built and Henrik and his wife married moves in. But together with them, they also take in uh, Henrik's brother's kids. Remember, there was Brita, who couldn't speak and was also deaf. There was also Thomas, and there was also a son who was also called Olaf, and he was also deaf and dumb. So I guess they decided that they will take them in just to like help to take care about them, because as I mentioned, they were really caring family. They were looking after each other, and I think it's really sweet. And now, all the information that I'm going to tell you further in the video will gonna concern this particular house. Now we have reached that point when we understand the relation between the family members, etc, etc. There is no real documentation that says when exactly these haunted things started to happen in this house, but what is known that allegedly people are saying that this happened one Easter weekend when the cows that this family owned one morning just started to run around the forest as if somebody had let them out from their stalls. 
the cows were running around and they looked as if somebody had scared them and made them run out. And a neighboring boy called August, I guess he was not a boy, like a teenager or a young man, uh, he noticed that and afterwards he started also to check in in the family and what he said that like with time, the stress levels and like the anxiety among the family members simply started to increase because they also started to talk about some weird activities and stuff happening to them, not only in the stalls with the cows, but also inside the house. For example, when Marit and Brita were milking the cows, some kind of random stones from around started to like levitate and they flew on them as if they were the main targets of this attack. And also the buckets with the milk, they were moving around. So it got really, really crazy. And afterwards, the family members, according to the people who talked to them, said that they started to refer this kind of entity that was like torturing them as he. As I already said that with time, this he, this entity moved from the barn and from the stalls to the house. So crazy stuff started to happen also inside the house. August, the young man from the neighboring farm that I already mentioned, he said that quite often the family, when they were really desperate and couldn't handle this he who was attacking them inside the house, they came like to him for help. So he came to the family house to Valguna Ho and like talked to them, tried to calm them down. He was the one who heard the stories directly from the family members that something crazy had been happening inside. And he was not there only after this, these kind of strange events had happened. He was also there and allegedly also witnessed this crazy stuff happening inside there. So he said, I quote, you had to hold on to the food containers, plates and pans with all your strength because they wanted to turn when you sat down to eat. He had to even like use all of his force to keep these like kitchen utensils and plates on the table. So this is how serious it was. Now, one of the questions that you might already be asking to yourself, are they going to church? Maybe they were pagans and, you know, like did some rituals that probably attracted some ghosts. According to the church records, this was a really nice Christian family who came to church every Sunday and didn't have any like bad habits or let's say tendencies to do like some dark magic or something. And also an interesting fact is that the church records do not mention anything about these paranormal activities happening in their house. So that's a little bit like, you know, tricky part. But still, we know that this family really is a nice family. They're Christians. They're helping each other. They're really nice people. Why would somebody attack them? Okay, and now I'm just gonna drop some really creepy, really interestingly creepy fact. And this really made me think. The church document said that in the year 1888, one of Henrik's brother's sons that he took in into the house, his name was Thomas, got seriously ill. And the church records say that some prayers are sent out to him so that he gets well as soon as possible. After a while, Thomas dies. And now, get this, Thomas dies on June 8th of the same year. And that's exactly the same date when Merit lost her baby. Remember when she was 37, she had a stillborn baby. And this baby also died exactly on the same date. Coincidence or not, you tell me. The thing where I am getting a bit suspicious, though, is that we do not really know what kind of disease Thomas had, because it just says that he was seriously ill and prayers are sent out to him and then he suddenly dies. So it would be interesting to know what really happened to him. But still, it's kind of creepy. You must agree with me. Jarl Eriksson has written a book. It was released in the year 1996, and he highlights how the ghostly he managed to create disorder, fear, and terror in the family's home. 
In the book he writes, Stones from the smokehouse wall were torn loose, boilers were turned upside down, the coffee maker sailed like a bird through the smokehouse, a bench was cracked and the window was pushed out with frames and everything. Merit, the wife of Henrik, actually was allegedly more sensitive towards this entity that was haunting the house. She was the one who usually felt that it's approaching and something crazy is about to happen inside the house and then she was like giving out a warning to the rest of the family so be prepared something is going down in a couple of minutes or so an interesting fact is that as i said the family was calling the entity um he but uh, Merit was quite often referring to this entity in plural saying that well the little grays are coming like grays why why grays was she referring to something alien or I don't know? And remember, she had a deteriorating eyesight. So at one point, uh, as I read, she was already completely blind and tied to bed. This was the level how sick she was. And even though she kind of managed to figure out and call this entity the little grays, she would not normally see the color of things. So it doesn't really make sense. Maybe she was not yet blind when she decided to call them greys. Maybe she was just like seeing some kind of figure uh, that looked like grey or some kind of shadow. I don't know. It, it sounds so creepy. And it was also said that Merit allegedly was putting little breadcrumbs in the floor cracks to feed these greys. Like why? Maybe she was talking about mice rather than a ghost. I don't know, but it sounds so weird and I could not find any like explanation of why she was doing all of this. But even though she was like putting those breadcrumbs in the floor cracks, apparently it didn't help because things continued. I read that even a priest visited their house just to see what what's the vibe there, I guess. And allegedly this priest was attacked by a lot of things like kitchen utensils and uh, other stuff started to fly and attack the priest, so he went out. I would love to know whether this priest actually did something like, I don't know, like some kind of uh, exorcism or whatever, but none of the documents say something like that. So this would probably make us wonder if the story about the priest is even real. But nevertheless, what we know is that the people were aware that something crazy is happening in the house and nobody could help them. So at the end, uh, the tortured and tired family that consisted of Henrik, his wife Merit, who was now completely blind and tied to bed, also Henrik's brother's daughter Britta, all of them were kind of forced to move out of this house. And it happened in the year 1900 in a hurry. They left everything behind, like all of the things they owned, they left there in the house and just moved out. The good news is that the family now in their new place could live a peaceful life and they lived until the moment when they reached their natural death. So I guess whatever it was, it didn't follow them to the new place, which kind of explains probably why people started to speculate about the poltergeist situation because in general poltergeist is an entity that is attached to a certain house or a place so maybe it it, it kind of makes sense. Henrik Kalinen passed away on the June 15 of the year 1903 and his wife Merit died five days later and Britta continued her life until the year 1929. After a while, the house of Welguna Ho was demolished. Uh, before that, it was just standing there with all of the things inside and nobody even cared to go, let's say, take some things for themselves because they were afraid that they're going to take this entity with themselves. So some of the parts of this demolished house, like wood and uh, window frames, they were used to build some other houses in the area. But uh, as far as it's known, none of these houses had something like paranormal happening there because of 
the pieces that were used from this haunted house. When Valguna Ho house was demolished, allegedly people said that the paranormal activities stopped. And some people say that this, whatever it was, he or the greys or poltergeist, moved uh, to a forest. It's uh, like uh, in the southern part because some people have reported seeing some paranormal activity there. But then again, like how you can tell it, like inside the house, of course, things were flying and attacking you, but in a forest, what would be that? Like, did people see ghosts or something? But that's what people been telling in the area. So all in all, this is the story. This is a legend about this haunted house. Uh, and well, although there's a lot of exciting things and facts known, at least told by the people, well, at least we can say that this story has survived the test of a time because like we are now talking about it now uh, and it started in the 1800s. There are still so many questions and so many pieces of the puzzle missing. So let's speculate a bit. Is there a possibility that this was indeed a poltergeist or paranormal? Yes, of course, although we do not have any like specific documented evidence and this makes this story a bit cheesy, all right? And this might as well be the case when something like tiny happened, the one of the family members got scared, he told the other family members and then all of them got scared and Afterwards, they kind of started to make a big deal. Probably they told about it to this neighbor, August, and he told it to some other like friends of his and added a bit like a, of his point of view to the story. And this is how the story got its layers and reached us up to nowadays. And now it sounds like it's a story of a poltergeist. And also remember, all of the family members, unfortunately, were disabled. There is a chance that something happened that they couldn't actually like understand because all of them were like impaired in their hearing. Some of them even couldn't see well. So maybe this just made this problem even bigger because like they couldn't perceive it completely and this is why they said that something is happening and we cannot explain that that must be some kind of entity so where i'm going with this is that probably something happened maybe not even paranormal but the story itself became bigger with time and people retelling to each other you know this is i think the theory that i'm believing most me personally. And if you have any kind of other options and explanations that could be possible and would explain all of these things happening, you are very welcome to write those down in the comment section. I'm just gonna add that nowadays, of course, people have created a um, tourism destination out of this area. So there are uh, guided tours to the specific place where once there stood this haunted house. And a tour guide is going to tell you the whole story of the haunted house and make it sound as creepy and as scary as possible. <laughs> so now they're making business out of it, which is kind of adds to my theory like nowadays we are adding layers to this so that people would buy it and believe it so we cannot actually have a time machine and go back in time have an interview with these people who lived in the house unfortunately uh, and it's such a shame that uh, there is no documented like uh, testimony from these people. We have just the church records that say, yes, these people existed and they lived, they died, they got married, just a normal life circle. And then they decided to move out of this house. But is that part of the poltergeist and all the creepy stuff really true? I don't know. It's up to you. Do you believe in it? I truly enjoyed diving into this story. It was really exciting, although I really would love to have more evidence. I think I'm a bit nerdy about having evidence. Like, everything has to be proved. I don't believe everything unless it has solid things or documents where I can read about it <laughs> or something that I can touch or something that's like really legit. And I think that's the right approach to things like, you know, UFO, paranormal, legends and myths. They sound nice, they sound exciting, but proof, proves the thing we're after. And that's it, my friends. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed this story. 
It's been a while since I talked about ghosts, poltergeists, and something paranormal, so it's something a bit different. And at the end, as always, I just wanted to wish you a happy, lovely day. I hope you have a really good mood and see you in the next video. Bye! Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>